It might be more powerful, but the GameCube can't compare to the awesome might of the PlayStation 2. I look back at the GameCube pretty fondly. It was the console most of my friends had in elementary school, and despite it being Nintendo's second worst-selling home console, it got some of the best games of that generation. The tiny discs were one of the stranger aspects of the system, but if you wanted to get into GameCube accessories, there's a whole world of weird stuff to talk about. Nintendo themselves weren't completely disinterested in the idea of weird accessories. Check this out. Anybody remember the broadband adapter? It plugs in on the bottom of the console and gives you access to an Ethernet port. There was a modem version as well, but this is the one everyone wants. Why? LAN, of course! Fantasy Star Online brought the GameCube onto the internet, but every other compatible game allowed you to have a LAN party with your friends. 1080 Avalanche, Kirby Air Ride, and Mario Kart Double Dash. Yep, just those three. And I've never been able to try it since I'm the only one I know with a broadband adapter. So in theory, you could have eight GameCubes all connected together. Just think of all the equipment that would take. Now here's an accessory most people look fondly upon, the Game Boy Player. Everyone knows what this is, you can play Game Boy games on your TV. All three generations of Game Boy games are supported, and some would argue it's the best way to play them. My favorite part is the eject button, which shoots the cartridge out like a missile. It's the perfect way to launch Sonic Genesis as far away as possible. Before I get into the main part of the video, I want to mention this honestly amazing controller. The Hip Gear screen pad is a functional GameCube controller with a tiny LCD stuck on top of it. I guess it could be useful in case somebody else wanted to use the TV, but gaming on that small of an LCD doesn't seem that appealing to me. I guess Nintendo liked the idea since they made a whole console out of it 10 years later. But now, it's time for the main event. Yeah, I can't believe what I'm looking at either. Intech were the company responsible for this. I don't know much about them, aside from the fact that they were based out of Miami and they apparently shut down or at least restructured sometime in the late 2000s. Console accessories were their specialty, and one look at their old website would tell you that. Look at this, it's like an early 2000s time capsule. I can almost hear the dial-up sound just by looking at this. They made accessories for all the consoles and handhelds of the time, but I'm talking about the GameCube here, so let's begin with Intech's portable GameCube screen. Vivid game graphics like TV, oh, we'll see about that. I went out of my way to find purple versions of all these accessories to match my Indigo GameCube, but they were available in other colors as well. They were really trying to push this as a portable option, but why not just go for the GBA instead? Let's get inside the box and see what this thing is like. Well, it's pretty solid at least, and hey look, more Intech products. Lots of unusual stuff, like these cheap-looking third-party controllers, a battery to power both the GameCube and screen, and even component kit. Whoa, wait, what? Okay, real quick, the component cables are some of the most expensive cables in gaming history. They're around two to three hundred dollars now and highly sought after by collectors. The idea that there may have been third-party cables made is huge. It's a shame these never made it to production, but hey, maybe there's a prototype lurking around out there somewhere. Anyway, back on track. The GameCube was frequently made fun of due to it having a carrying handle, but this screen cleverly uses it as a mounting point. The front of the screen looks pretty good, and it has the usual dials for adjusting brightness and volume. On the left, there's one stereo headphone jack, which might come in handy for connecting to a larger stereo system. The right has an AV input, so we could technically connect anything to this screen. On the back, we've got two connections. One goes to the GameCube's analog AV out, and the other is for power. Now here's where things get even more interesting. But how, you might ask, is this screen powered? Nowhere in the box do you get an AC adapter. There's a car charger, but that's it. No. Instead, you get this. Yep, it draws power from the GameCube's existing power adapter. You just plug them together, and there we go. This does not look safe at all, but does it work? Yes, it does! Now, let's see those vivid game graphics like TV. Well, they're graphics, alright. Okay, I know at the end of the day this is an LCD screen from 2002, so I should cut it some slack. But honestly, the ghosting here is pretty bad. It's good enough to play slower-paced games, I guess. So of course I'm going to try out the fastest game on the system, because why not? Yeah, this went about as well as I expected. Most games look tolerable, but as good as a TV? Maybe, if you're playing an RF. 
It's playable though, and the built-in speakers are actually pretty good. They get really loud though, so I just recommend using the headphone jack. My favorite part of this screen is that you can use the Game Boy Player on it and turn your GameCube into the least practical Game Boy Advance ever. Like I said before, the screen also has an AV input, so you could plug in whatever you wanted as long as it uses composite video. Intech advertised that you could connect a camera, but I tried my Nomad because everyone has one of those laying around. Now we have ourselves a contest to see which screen is blurrier. There was one other thing in this brochure that caught my eye. These huge speakers that attach to the GameCube. I wonder how they attach and how they work. So naturally, I bought one, and here it is. I swear the purple versions of all these accessories are the hardest ones to find. Look at this insanity. What were these people thinking? This looks like mission control. As it turns out, the base of this unit is actually an AV switch box, so you could use it to connect multiple devices to the same TV, and it uses the same power splitter as the screen did. These things just make me so uncomfortable to use. Let's get this screen off and set up the speakers. The base is clearly designed for a standard GameCube, but the Game Boy Player still fits. The speakers just sit alongside the console, and they can even be raised or lowered. The back, though, becomes an absolute mess. The speakers connect on either side, and the analog AV out from the GameCube goes into the base. From there, you can either connect the standard AV cables here, or use these composite outputs to enable the AV switch. Buttons are located on the front to select your input, but input 1 is always for the GameCube. Anyway, let's see how it sounds. Not bad at all, although the speakers are lacking some bass. Also the build quality isn't that good, as the left speaker randomly stopped working on me after only an hour of use at 50% volume. The speaker did start working again after I turned it off for a while. Attention all units. Suspect seen heading south. Map all major roads and capture the suspect. So these are pretty cool, if not extremely impractical, but... Oh. You can do that? Well, what am I waiting for? There are some compromises that have to be made to get these working at the same time. The screen can't plug into the GameCube's AV out anymore because of the AV switcher, but Intech kindly included a cable to run back into the screen, so that helps. But wait, you may ask, how can you power this entire thing? You're not gonna believe me, but you chain both power splitters together. If this wasn't gonna blow a fuse before, it very well might now. Let's just get this plugged into the TV as well with the convenient purple AV cable. And while we're back here, let's use component because why the heck not? I did sell a kidney to be able to afford the cables after all. It really is an impressively ridiculous site that is, of course, not endorsed by Nintendo at all. And it runs fine as ever, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't make me the least bit nervous. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I've dubbed the ultimate GameCube. If the Genesis CD32X was considered the Voltron of video games, then I think the first challenger has approached. Aside from being the least practical setup I've ever seen, it does work, and I am impressed with that at least. Intech did go on to make gaming accessories up to the sixth generation of consoles, but faded into obscurity after that, and none of their products quite lived up to the monstrosity you see here. Well, I think we've determined the GameCube's superiority over the PS2 in both power and size. Now the only thing left to do is hop back on Intech's old website and see if there's anything I missed. Ah, crap.